Hi everyone. Today we are going to make a really cute nighttime slash possibly galaxy background. You can use it for that. And we are actually going to make a card together. So I'm going to use my Distress inks, mostly the oxides and one regular ink. And I'll explain why I'm using the black soot in the oxide and the regular um, when I get to that point. So um, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is this is Canson watercolor paper. It's not um, super expensive watercolor paper. I just buy it at Michael's and um, that's what works the best for blending with distress inks is watercolor paper. However, the oxide inks are very forgiving when it comes to papers because they blend really, really beautifully. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start laying some ink down. The first color I'm gonna use is the Peacock Feathers in the oxide ink. And I've just got my uh, pad on the, um, the round blending brush. Uh, or sponge those are the best ones this is the round ones so you're just gonna for the most part start in the center and you're you're gonna work your way across the entire length of the paper trying your best to get it smooth and a nice line and then we are going to go to we're going to close that up so we don't get it all over and we're going to go to the picked raspberry distress ink and I've already got the, the pad on here. Again we're just going to smush it in there like that and then this one is behaving badly. I use my distress ink so much especially the oxides, the, the, the pads are getting a little bit messed up. So again, just going across the entire length of it, or width diagonally. If I didn't mention, the piece that I'm working on is 5x5, five five, and that's just for the sake of our card. So we're going to put that one away and we're going to go to the fossilized amber distressing and we will change our pad. Okay. Oh, I have it on the bottom here. A really good tip for storing your the pads so that you know which color they go with is I just put a little bit, I don't know if you can see it, but it's just um, a little Velcro dot on the bottom of my ink pads. And then this sticks really well to it. And then you always have the color you need that goes with, um, with what you're using. So put that on. And we're gonna put the fossilized amber next to the peacock feathers here. And I'm just working on my craft mat, in case I didn't mention, my Tim Holtz craft mat. Ranger Tim Holtz. Okay, and then we're going to put that away. And then we're going to go to the Twisted Citron Oxide Ink. And we're going to put that next to the Picked Raspberry. Okay, so now we're gonna go, we're gonna go to the Distress Oxide in the Black Soot. We're gonna start with that. And you'll notice why I'm, while I'm blending this, it's not as dark as the, the regular Black Soot. That's from the 
the regular range, not the oxides. It's actually quite a bit lighter. I would, I would almost put it as a brownish black, brown, you know, maybe a, a, like a, it's not really a gray, but it's not as black as the, um, the regular one. So we're, we're just going all around now, all around the entire of our, of our little sheet here, our canvas. And yes, just go all around. And then once you've worked your way around, start going in the center. And just cover that. Try to go from the outside in with that. And you'll see that's starting to look like a kind of like a northern lights. I live in Canada and um, I live in Alberta actually and and we, we get the northern lights here. Not as much as the maritime provinces but we do get them and they are just magnificent. So we're going to put that one away and we're going to bring in the, the regular black soot and you'll, you'll see this is quite a bit darker than the than the oxide version. Like you can already see it's quite a bit darker. And that's why I like to use both. They complement each other really, really well. But uh, the black soot, the regular black soot is much, much darker. So I'm going to leave that like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to some of our, I've got inky fingers now, put these two black ones away. We're going to go back to some of our, our brighter colors. And we'll start with picked raspberry. And we're going to go back in. And that's what the fantastic thing is about the oxide inks is they will blend like that's blending on top of black right now like it's showing up on top of black and we're going to do the same thing kind of just sweep it across and then we'll go back to the peacock feathers and you can see that it's showing up even on that, on that black cardstock. And then we'll go back with the fossilized amber. And that's pretty much it. It's just so pretty, really, really pretty. So the next step for me, for what I'm doing with mine, is I'm going to use my white gel pen and I'm going to start it, if you ever have problems with your white gel pen starting, start it on your hand and it will, um, the warmth of your hand will get that ink flowing. So we're going to make some, some stars. So we're going to do some bigger ones and some smaller ones and some, some, sh some shiny, some shiny stars just all over. You can just, if you want, you can go all over and just do dots like this. And then you can come back in once you're done. I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom because we are going to put some snow down there. You can come back in and do the bigger, the bigger dots there and, and some more shinier ones. Be careful not to lean your hand on if you're using a white gel pen or I mean, I'm guessing probably any medium you're going to use 
to add your dots with once you've added them because they it will smear especially on the distress ink because it is not dry underneath so it takes a little bit longer yeah just make some of them bigger and some of them smaller it does not have to be even close to perfect because if you look up at the sky at night it's really really very different all right so let's start putting our card together okay so the next step is we're going to I've cut a hill with uh, with one of our dies like a little snow hill all the products I used will be linked below all of our dies and stamps so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to give the the hill a little bit more of a a, a night a night snow look a night snow glow look so I'm going to take again the um, the peacock feathers distress ink and I'm going to go very lightly just along the edges keep in mind to only go very lightly along the edges like that the bottom as well probably a little bit heavier at the bottom because you're getting that shadow from the ground now we're going to go to the tumbled glass and this is distress ink but it's not oxide ink and we're going to dip our little ink pad I use this the tumble glass so much it has its own home it pretty much never leaves this and then we're going to go in and blend through the center with the tumbled glass so you get a little bit of a lighter look through the center of it so let's get that covered up and out of the way I'm going to show you another one of my favorite inking methods that I've learned lately that I love so we're going to use the distress oxide for this part and I have our North Pole die here and what I've done is I just used some red pattern paper across the back like that so that when it shows through it's just all red at the front and so we're going to take the distress oxide because it's nighttime so there's going to be darker shadows cast and you're going to open it and you're going to lay your die your die cut face down like this and you're going to very lightly drag it through your ink pad and it gives it a really fantastic shadow on there I'm just I absolutely love this look and I think it, it really it really brings out the look of your the like the nooks and crannies of your dies and your die cuts and gives them a different look and I did a little one the our little steel die cut as well and I dragged that one through the antique linen distress oxide ink and these were also on watercolor paper I die cut them with watercolor paper and I just put a little piece of black at the back here to go across his eyes and I actually colored his nose and a little bit in here just for a shadow with some with Copic markers and you're gonna want to do that before you do your inking your dragging or however you're inking your die cuts because you don't want it to you don't want um, your Copics to get the distress ink on them all right so let's go ahead and put together our little scene so we have our nighttime background here and we have our little hill so we're going to put that across the bottom here and we're going to use, I'm using some deluxe adhesive from Nuvo. And it's a little bit sticky today, but it'll give us what we need here. And we're going to put that across the bottom here. And I used, again, I, like I said, I used the hill die for that. And then 
I've colored up two of our little polar bears from our stamps and I've mounted what I did is I I stamped this one first then I cut him out on masking paper and I masked him off and then I stamped this one on top and when you do that whatever you're stamping on top looks like it's behind so it's a it's a really fun method to try so I'm going to take my I've popped them up and I've just taken off the backing and I'm going to mostly center them right there. And then I think our little North Pole sign, I just kind of want to tuck right in there, like almost wonky. Get some glue on there. Whatever you're putting on distress inks, make sure if you're gluing that you don't have glue poking out anywhere or coming out because it will react with the distress inks and even a clear gluing dry, <laughs> drying glue, you'll see that around it. And I think we're going to tuck our little ceiling over here because he's hanging out with his polar bear buddies. Just tuck him in right there. He's hanging out. And then I have two snowflakes from our dies. And like I said, everything's going to be listed and linked below so you'll know everything I'm using. And I just kind of want to tuck them behind as well. So it's a little added something. I didn't really figure out exactly where. That one looks pretty good there. And I'm only going to put glue kind of in the around the center parts. Kind of like just right in there because I want it to have a little bit of dimension back there. Just so it can still stick up a little bit. And then this other one. It's kind of thinking, hmm, does that look cute down here? I didn't really figure out exactly where I wanted it yet. Okay, let's lay that one aside for now and we'll figure this guy out. This winter cheer sentiment comes with these sweet little polar bears and we're just going to, we're going to probably pop this one up closer to the top here. I'll get some some of the the pop adhesive on there. Yeah, we'll just put that right there. It looks pretty cute. Oh, that looks cute right there. Sometimes you just gotta wait, and then inspiration hits you. That's pretty much the end of our sweet little card. I'm just going to mount it on a card base and there will be some photos of it. And I, I just love doing this nighttime look. I love the beautiful northern lights behind them. And like I said, you can also use this as a galaxy background if you want to and use some of our space themed stamps and dies and put them on there. That would look adorable. Thank you so much for playing with me today and have a wonderful day.